How you doing, everybody? Today, we're going to take a quick look at A Haunting in Venice, directed by Kenneth Branagh and starring Branagh as legendary detective Hercule Poirot, also starring Tina Fey, Jamie Dornan, and Michelle Yeoh. A retired Poirot is attempting to live a quiet life in post-war Venice, more attempting than succeeding. But then one day, his mystery writer friend, Ariadne Oliver, played by Tina Fey, shows up at his door and invites him to a seance. He ultimately decides to attend the seance in order to expose the so-called psychic, played by Michelle Yeoh, as a fraud. Unfortunately, the seance soon leads to a murder, and Poirot must come out of retirement to find the killer. And as he investigates, some strange and spooky things start happening in the house. Is there a perfectly rational explanation, or is the house haunted? This is the third of Branagh's Poirot films based on the works of Agatha Christie. The first one was Murder on the Orient Express, which I thought was perfectly fine. The second was Death on the Nile, which was not so fine. It wasn't terrible by any means, but it was definitely a step backward, and I was a little surprised that they actually made a third movie. It is loosely based on Agatha Christie's novel Halloween Party. Very loosely. They did use the names of several characters, and there is a Halloween Party involved, but that's pretty much it. The setting is moved from England to Italy. I don't think the book had any of the supernatural elements that are in the movie. A lot of characters that were children in the original story have been aged up. So if you were looking for a faithful adaptation of Christie's story, you will not find it here. What you will find, however, is a damn good movie and easily the best of Branagh's Poirot film so far. It does seem like they learned some lessons from Death on the Nile, which I thought just took forever to get going. A Haunting in Venice had me invested right away. It starts with Poirot hilariously trying to enjoy a quiet retirement, but he's constantly pursued by people who want his detective services, and his bodyguard keeps beating the crap out of him and throwing him into the river and stuff. And then Ariadne shows up and invites him to the seance, which is led by the fabulous Michelle Yeoh, and we meet a whole host of other interesting characters. A whole lot of fun stuff is happening before we even get to the actual murder. And then when we do get to the actual murder, things start getting kind of spooky. And I believe the Poirot stories are usually pretty grounded in reality, so I wasn't really sure how well introducing supernatural elements would work, but they actually pulled it off pretty well. And the spooky atmosphere lent itself very well to the mystery. We got a very well-told story with a classic whodunit structure. You have a whole bunch of people locked inside a house where a murder has taken place, and Poirot has to figure out who's the killer. Funny how this keeps happening to him. And of course, they do their best to keep you guessing by making it look like everyone could be the killer. Without giving anything away, I did have an idea who the killer might be, as well as an explanation for all the supernatural stuff, and I turned out to be right on both counts, but I don't mind predictability as long as it's entertaining, and it was. Brana clearly loves playing this character, and I can't say I blame him. I would too. He is funny, he is smart as hell, he is a bit full of himself at times. Okay, more than a bit, but he at least can back it up. I really liked Faye as Ariadne Oliver. She and Brana play off each other so well. I hope we see more of this character. And it turns out Jamie Dornan can deliver a very good performance when he's not shackled to the work of E.L. James. He plays a doctor who fought in World War II, and he has seen some shit that no one should ever have to see. Apparently, this character helped to liberate one of the concentration camps, and that'll do a number on anyone. He is barely holding it together, mostly because of his son, who is played by Jude Hill. And my god, that kid is good. I believe Brana has worked with him before, and I could see why he'd want to keep doing so. So talented for someone so young. I don't have much bad to say about this. I really like this movie, and I can recommend it without hesitation. It took three movies, but I think Brana has finally found his footing with Poirot, and I hope we get a fourth movie. And that's all I have to say about A Haunting in Venice. Until next time, take care.